Evening, Gasheads, and welcome back to yet another live stream. Welcome back to another episode, episode 28 of the Talking Gas podcast. Hope everyone is doing well on this Thursday evening. Hope you've all had a good good week as well, you know, uh, and as always, appreciate the class support. Do subscribe if you're new. Uh, there's still a lot of you that watch that are not subscribed, so please do subscribe. It is free. Just click the red subscribe button. Do hit the like button as well. As always, we do aim for 50 likes, so if you're watching live or watching back on the replay, then do hit the like button. Keep up the class support. Uh, as always, if you're watching live, get all your thoughts, get all your questions in for us. There's plenty to talk about, including the last game against Fleetwood. And also, we're going to be bringing on Jake Tongue, who was with us earlier on in the season. Lincoln Fan, who's part of that League One podcast, he'll be coming on in around 20 minutes. So, yeah, it should be interesting to chat with him. He's going to be absolutely buzzing, uh, you know, Lincoln on fire at the moment. So, um, but yeah, uh, as always, joined by Neil. Neil, how are you? Yeah, all good, fella. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Like you said, like you talked about, just letting the uh, ticking off the games now, isn't it? Until the summer, really. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, that's all it is. So yeah, yeah. Get all your questions in. We got Chris in as well. Uh, evening to you. Uh, we've always, also got Sergio as well. I'm guessing he's Costa Rican. Hey, guys, you know anything about Aguilera's injury? He should be coming back um, maybe this weekend or maybe after the international break because, of course, I think he'll he'll be going to that. I think he's nearly back. So, yeah, it's been a bit frustrating. He started so well, of course, on his debut. And then, yeah, a few games after that, he's been out injured with a hamstring injury. And also, thanks for Talker United Reacts. Hello, first time here for me. Thanks for tuning in. To a rover stream. Uh, I know hope hopefully you get all the things sorted at Torquay because it's an absolute shambles with Torquay. I think going into administration and another points deduction, which isn't good. I've always liked Torquay as a club. Uh even into Rob Stavek as well, and even into Charlie. I don't know how you guys feel the same, but I've I've never hoped for a season to end as much as this season. It's been such a boring year. Well, it was the same um as last season, really. We'll obviously get into it. Also, before we do. Uh, as always, we do the plug for Fan Hub. Um, this channel is sort of in partnership with Fan Hub. So I've got uh, the code underneath my name uh, in the description and also scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you know anyone um, that hasn't joined Fan Hub or if you haven't joined Fan Hub, then do use the code. They're, they've also just announced on there that you can have a chance to play at the, the MEM. You can get tickets, you can get merch such as jackets, coats, t shirts, you can get lager. Uh, cider so yeah do get involved use the ticket uh, as the golden ticket code it is um one dash r seven n so do get involved with that and yeah we'll get into obviously the Fleetwood game first um and it's actually quite interesting that we we talked about a few weeks ago Rovers are now only three points off what we finished the whole of last season uh we finished last season on 53 points we've got obviously nine games to go, and we've reached the 50-point mark. Uh, sixth clean sheet of the season. Uh, five away from home, which is still mad, really, how we've only kept one at home. I still can't believe that. Only one uh, clean sheet in 18 games at home. But, yeah, what was your thoughts, Neil? Obviously, we went unchanged as well. I was I was, I was expecting maybe one change, but, yeah, went unchanged. Um, both of us predicted a draw. Obviously, you predicted one all. I went with a 2-2. Two, two. A lot of people said we would lose trying to play the you know reverse psychology. But yeah, what did you make of the game? What was your thoughts on that? I know it was a bit of a frustrating game with us, but you know, we didn't lose. But yeah, nil-nil thoughts on that. I think it it lived up to everything we thought it was gonna be, to be honest. Um it was never gonna be much to watch, was it? It it it, it looked like an all right. It looked like an all right team playing a bad team, didn't it? Like, yeah. It there was very. I know. The, I know the pitch was abysmal, but you know, like I said, if you're a decent outfit, you you overcome that. Um, there was there was just there wasn't much to really to talk about as far as quality. Or I bet the highlights lasted all of about twenty seconds. I bet there wasn't much to yeah. show. Um, yeah. I don't think either team have any complaints about, you know, the result. If if either would have got beat, I don't think they could have had any complaints either. It's just one of them where you come away with what you come away with. Um, 
for the Evans chance is massive. I'd have backed him to score that nine times yeah. out of ten. I'm, so, I'm shocked that he didn't tuck that away, to be honest. But again, it was one of them. Whoever scores scores first goes and wins that game. It's probably yeah. mi- much like the game we had at home to him, to be honest. Whoever nicks that first one goes on and wins it in a pretty shitty, scrappy affair. Um, the game sort of screamed of the best performances being all the holding midfielders for both sides. So that tells you exactly how that how that game went and where the best part of that game was being played. Um, a clean sheet on the roads, not to be sniffed at, but really, it it whether we are at the season now, does it really count for much? You know, I'm trying to pick yeah. the positives out of something here. You know what I mean? Like a clean sheet on the roads, decent with you know a back line which is going to get blown to bits in the summer anyway because that won't resemble what we what we have next season. Um, Fleetwood will probably be more well a lot more disappointing than us for that point because I think all the results went. For them and they never yeah. managed to, they never managed to capitalize on you know i know they, they hit the woodwork etc i know as we as we did in the last sort of minute but like i said no one can have any complaints nil nil and if either side would have got beat i don't think anyone could have had too many grumbles but it was it was just a pretty mere affair wasn't it yeah it was it was it was quite annoying because it was a game that i thought yeah, it just went went by. Um, both team both teams were having good chances. Actually, I think you know I said the other day. I think we we started really well first ten minutes. Um, you know, a lot better than we we have done, and we started a lot better than we did in the previous game against them, of course, where they scored early. Um, but then after the first ten minutes, it sort of went to yeah a lot of passing around, just possession for possession's sake. Then they come back into the game. They look more dangerous when they went forward than we did in their sort of 20 minutes spell. Then obviously, like you said, that Evans chance was was massive. And like I said after as after the game as well, that it was only gonna if a, a team were gonna win it, it's gonna it's gonna be one nil. But obviously it didn't happen. But it was just yeah, it was just frustrating how yeah, we, we got into so many good areas. You know, Vell was really dangerous. Um obviously he hasn't played his position a lot this season, where it'd be Camel as a winger. He's, uh, you know, mainly played at, you know, left back and left wing back or, yeah, left mid in a 3-5-2. So, yeah, that chance where I'm still a bit confused why he didn't shoot, where he got into that really good area, but he wanted to, yeah, you know, pass it off instead. I thought, yeah, there was that bagger um, header, which hit the post from the only one good set piece Evans did all night. A lot of the set pieces were poor. Um, from his point of view, where it'd be corner or free kick, but the, the one good one did it the post. But yeah, it was just one of these games where, you know, like you said, it was um, a better point for us considering obviously their situation. I, I thought, to be honest with you, I was expecting a little bit more from Fleetwood, although, like we said, they did have chances that bag at one where he cleared it off the line. Um, like you said, they hit the post as well. But like you said, uh, overall, it was probably an even result. Um, what was I just want to get some, some of your thoughts? What, what did you make of Luca Hall? Because, um, he, he obviously hasn't played much this season, I think he's only started five or six games in the, the league, and it was his first game back against Derby, um, you know, on the weekend. What did you make of his performance? Because there's, I think, there's been a lot of um, very, very mixed questions on him. Obviously, he's a player that comes through the youth academy, he's in. What is third or th- fourth full season? A lot. Of, I think he's one of the players out of contract. Um, yeah. What did you make of his performance? Um, much like a lot of them, like I said, the centre of the pitch was where you saw everyone, both teams' best work with their older midfielders. To be honest, um, he didn't. He didn't stand out to be anything. And to be honest, he didn't. He didn't do. He kept a clean sheet at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? He, yeah. Like, but. It's very rare. Like, I know that in the League Two season, he had one or two, but it's very rare you'll see Luca Hall pull up trees anyway. You know I mean? He just goes about his business and he does he does an all right job and no one really complained, especially in that League Two season. You know, um, League One, he found a bit more challenging, as you'd expect, going up a level. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah. he's had limited game time this sort of year, but um, it's hard to bag on any of them, really. Do you know what I mean? It was that, it was that much of a drab affair, um, not through... 
lack of effort or endeavour or, you know, it just the game didn't go that way to be able to open up and have any real signs of quality. It wasn't like Luca Hall was um, having one-on-one duels constantly there where, where he had the opportunity to, you know, show his skill set. Um, but he probably did look like a lad that hadn't played a lot of football. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can, you never, you never, it's very rarely you're going to come in, come into a game after you've been out for so long and hit the ground running and, you know, not have a little bit of um, a concern over your set, yourself and, um, that 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 back line's brand new to him himself. You know what I mean, it's not it's not like he's slotting back into something familiar. Like take yeah, Lincoln. It's, it's, it's been different all season, hasn't it? Really? It has. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just up and down, isn't it? So it's not like you're slipping into a to a comfortable format of going. You know what? I'm at the men. We're winning every week. There's loads of continuity, and I'll just slip back in here and I'll get looked after a little bit. But we'll go on and be be comfortable because we'll have loads of the ball and we'll stroke it about. We're not about that. You know, what I mean, we're not about that this season. So. Um, it was always going to be difficult for everyone, anyone who was going to come in and do it. And, you know, Luca probably a little bit more because of how limited his game time has been. He, he, when he has come in, he's not, like I said, he's not pulled up trees. He's had to earn his crust every time he plays. Some of his some of his performances have been indifferent. Um, but ultimately, he's a, he's a right back who's kept a clean sheet on the road. Like, you can't really, mm. you can't really bag him, can you? Like... I just think it's one of them that it just goes under the it just it just like I said, much like the game, the performance it passes you by, you take it off, say right on to the next one. Let's not let's not dig too deep into that. Yeah. Yeah, it was in- interesting. I, I thought yeah, I I just thought he was yeah, I just thought he was um poor. Um I know we kept a clean sheet, and obviously that's the main thing. Um, but I I just thought, yeah, on, on the ball we he was giving it away a lot. I think that Patterson was was doing really well against him. I mean, a lot of people say and well, Rob Savek saying I don't think Luke, uh, Luca Hall has the pace to play right back. Um, yeah, Tom Butler saying yes, waiting for the season to end as well. Um, Hall and Gordon got ripped all game. I thought I thought Gordon was solid. Um, like you said, it's been hard for them. I think Gordon, you know, if you look at last season, I think he played around 38, 39 games, and I think he's a, I think he's a, he's a, he's a solid left back. To be honest, I know he's not. The most attacking, but he's 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 pretty good at defending. But it's we're... it's just interesting with Luca Hall, isn't it? Because this season you would, because I think he ended the season. I know, obviously, as a, as a squad last season, and especially in the second half, it was sort of mere, wasn't it? But I thought Luca Hall and Gordon were were both looking really good defensively and stuff. And then yeah, he, then you come forward. into this season. Yeah, go on, go on. I've said it before with Luca a little bit though. He's, I think, once that kid grows into his body, because he's a million miles off to be from being the finished article. But I think once he grows into his body, you'll see him be a. It'll it'll be a centre half. I think. I don't know at what level. I don't know at what level. Do you know what I mean, I in my head can quite easily see him playing for a Forest Green, a Newport, a Swindon. Do you know what I mean? I can see him easily playing for one of them in is a centre half in a three, something like that. Mm. Um. But I don't think he's going to go on to be a right back. I just think that's where he's he's got games to start. I mean, you know, in his career, um, I just don't see him long term being a being a right back. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, to be fair, I think you said that a few times as well. Um, ben saying if we want to kick on, we need two proven fullbacks. Uh, Yusuf's saying the same as well. Um, it's it's just so frustrating is with Hunt. Um, because he's he, when he's played, he's been class. But again, he's he sort of missed games. I think that's been a a tale of our season. I know. I think we'll get onto Lincoln. They've had a lot of injuries, especially in the forward line um, for a lot of the season. But whereas us, it's sort of been all over the pitch, and especially in defence. If you if you can keep like a, a four of Hunt, James Wilson, um, Taylor, and say Gordon fit all season, then you might have a chance. But uh, you know, uh, shout out to Joe as well. He's saying that I really do think we'll play a back three next season. The thing is, we we were we were doing doing pretty well with three at the back. You know, our results at Bolton we we looked really good. I know we went on that few game period. I think around New Year where we we had a few poor results, and then obviously we we changed back to a back four. But yeah, for me personally, if you can if you get it right, whether it's a a three four three or a 3-5-2 like Lincoln do for example and a lot of teams do 
then you can get it right. It's just all about the balance. And hopefully with the summer, we can see that, you know, Taylor can get his full ideas behind, you know, the team and sort the recruitment out. But yeah, like you said, overall, I think, yeah, nil-nil. We kept a clean sheet, back-to-back away clean sheets is good. Going to Lincoln, or, yeah, ridiculous at the moment. Um, Jake's just, Jake's in the background smiling we'll, um, and we're pretty much getting to Lincoln now. So, yeah, keep getting your thoughts in. Do hit, keep hitting the like button as well. If you've got any questions as well, yeah, um, get them in and we'll send them to Jake. But, yeah, Jake uh, is now joining us. Jake, how are you? I'm good, boys. How are you? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, like you said, you you were smiling in there. You know, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be um, tough to say the least. Uh, you know, going to you, but tell us, tell us your thoughts on the last few games and also your your season so far. Because you were, you've been similar to us in a way where you've had injuries, you had a manager mm-hmm. change. Uh, you yep. know, um, Scabala, I think you appointed him in. Uh, early November, I think it was the 13th of November, mm-hmm. and he, he sort of started slowly. I think you know, yeah, you did have a lot of injuries. You started slowly. I think from when you appointed him till uh, January the first, I think he only had two wins. And you know, mm-hmm. you've gone on this mad run of 12 games unbeaten, seven wins, five draws, uh, the most informed team in the league. You know, you must be buzzing because obviously I watch. Um, and I think a, a few a few people in there watch you and Nappers and obviously mm. that League One <laughs> podcast. Make sure you check that out, guys, as well with um, yeah, yeah, Jake, Wardy, Tom and, and Nappers that uh, do it every week. But yeah, you must be pretty buzzing um, at the moment being a Lincoln fan. Yeah, it, it, it's hard not to be, isn't it? 11 goals in your last two, you know, uh, 12 unbeaten, you know. Yeah, it, it it's not bad. It, it it really isn't. But it's been a bit of an up and down season. I thought um, it, it we started off really well. I was literally just watching the last time I came on here with you two before um, whilst I was waiting, and um, I remember I came on. And I was like, oh, we've had a really positive start, and and we did. And then we 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 just let ourselves go a little bit. Mark Kennedy got the sack after a defeat against Burton. We're led to believe that was for for non footballing reasons. Um, and then Skabala came in, and, and to be honest, from pretty much when we played you at the Mem to probably that that game at, at home away to Wickham on the I think it was the seventh of January, um, we didn't have a centre forward. Uh, ben House got injured. I'm pretty yeah. sure he got injured at the Mem and got taken off. Um, Tyler Walker got injured at, at Sheffield United. Yeah, he's out injured as well. Yeah, he's out injured. He's a a, a really good centre forward. Um, and we were playing Jovan Makama up front, and, and Jovan is 19. He, he couldn't get into the Brackley team last season, and that's National League North. And there's no disrespect to Jovan because he's a, a talented footballer with a really good future. But he's not, if you want to finish in the playoffs in, in League One, you need to have a, a, a decent centre forward. And, and now that we've got in, in Joey Taylor, um, who's a very good centre forward, um, you, you've yeah. seen the, the rewards. You know, you look at the amount of clean sheets we've had defensively. Pretty much for the last two years, we've been very good at the back. Probably bar that yeah. one game that we had at the Mem, where we uh, where we won six three. We were awfully awful at the back that day, um, yeah. but we've been pretty good defensively, and uh, and it's all sort of married up this run where you know it starts with a, a 97th minute equaliser away at Wickham, and then it just carries, and and we, we we've won against teams that we should beat absolutely, in, in the likes of Exeter, Fleetwood, Burton. You'd expect Lincoln to, to be able to beat them. But it's it's how emphatic some of them have been. Like the Barnsley result on Saturday, I almost yeah. Do you know when you're in the stand? Believe that, like literally. You know when yeah. you're in the stand of a game and you you literally have no idea. You cannot understand how on earth that's happening because Barnsley have this amazing home record at three o'clock on a Saturday. They've not lost in in so long at home, and then we go and stick five past them, and then to back it up on Tuesday night with, with, with six goals and to dominate the game from start to finish. It's it's been pretty good recently, um, but we're under no illusions. We are still the outsiders. We've got a lot, lot of work to do, and and that starts on Saturday with a, a, a tricky game, I think, against Bristol Rovers. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I was watching you on um, Red All Over, and obviously mm. I knew anyway that your your record against Barnsley has been good in the last sort of mm. three or four games as well. That you you hadn't lost a game, but I was thinking, yeah. But someone told me that I thought after the game, after after a derby game, someone was like, "Have you seen the the Lincoln Barnsley result?" I was like, "No." It was like five one to mm. Lincoln. I was like, "You you're having a laugh?" But 
I, I can't remember the, the last time they conceded. For we've not lost yeah, at Oakwell since 1973. And we've, we've only played there five times, but we've beaten them every single time. Yeah, that is mad. But 5 1, though, that was that was crazy. And, and you know, one player you brought up who I, who I wanted us to sign, I think a lot of clubs were. At, um, were interested in, in that Joe Taylor. He's been on fire mm. as well. As, as well as that centre midfielder as well, he's got a brace in his last two. Um, Jack Moylan. So, yeah, Jack Moylan. So, and uh, the thing is with Lincoln as well is, and, you know, we if we get back to the, the game that you played at the Mem, obviously it was quite early on in the season mm-hmm. where I, I thought um, that was obviously with, with Barton. The, at the time we were playing a lot of, Possession football, but without really doing anything. Um, mm. Yeah, we had a few yeah. good results to start the season, but a lot of the games we were, yeah, just having a, all the ball and not really creating many chances. And I think yeah. you probably deserve to win um, with the chances. Mm. I think Sorensen has been unreal for you as well. I, I'd yes. probably rate him as one of the best wing backs in the league. And the thing as well is, you know, you talked about the clean sheets. I think you've got 16 clean sheets. And you've kept eight in your last 12. So mm. it tells you a lot, like you said, because you can look at a lot of teams where, yeah, you could like look at Cambridge, for example. They've got double the clean sheets that we've got, but obviously they're struggling. But whereas you, I think, I think to be honest with you, with your old manager, you, you had a good structure back then. Like you said, mm. it was off the field issues, but Skabala's just, yeah, took took a couple of months to, to get you going. But since then, he's he's been obviously, he put his ideas, you know, you know, tell us about obviously the way you play and, and your sort of setup for those that don't really know much about yeah. how Lincoln play. Yeah, so Scabala actually, I seem to remember he might have been linked with your job when you sat Jerry Barn. I'm pretty sure I saw him in the bookies at some point, um, in the odds, although they don't tend to have much of an idea anyway. Um yeah, yeah he's been amazing. Like he's he's got such an unconventional route into football. If, if you've got the time to go and look it up through um, Leeds United and Loughborough under, uh, University and, and, and working for the FA with, with Futsal and stuff. He's developed some really good footballers like Max Kilman, who's the captain of Wolves in the Premier League. Yeah. He's developed Rico Lewis as well. So he's got that natural ability of developing young players, which I think for a club like Lincoln and, and also for a club like Bristol Rovers, if you're going to compete um, in the areas that we want to compete in as a fans at the top of this league, um, you need to be really clever um, with your development of, of your players. You need to have to make sure that the players that you're developing, not only yours, but also that you're continuing to do so, so that you can sell them on, get the next one in and and not lose too much of a drop in quality. I think he's been really good at that. Um, in terms of the way that we play, um, it will be three, it'll be a variation of the three, five, two. Um, so what you'll notice is our wing back, so our right wing back and left wing back in Lass Sorensen and Rico Hackett will essentially play as right and left wingers. They will be right up against your outside centre halves or your um or your fullbacks, whatever system Matty Taylor, I think he plays a fullback. So it'll be up against your yeah. against your two natural fullbacks. Um, you then got all the space in the middle with, with technically gifted footballers. Ethan Arahan is I'm running out of superlatives, Charlie. I'm sure if you listen to, yeah. to Teal up on a yeah. on a weekly basis, I'm I'm so in love with that kid. He's he's a phenomenal little footballer. And then we we we've paired him with but well, obviously we had Ethan Hamilton in the reverse game. He's now out for the rest of the season. We signed Conor McGrandles in January to to bring in experience and cover. He's out for the rest of the season. So a bit like you, our, our injuries have come in one position all at once. So we had no strikers. And now we've got no midfielders. So we've had to play Danny Mandroy, who's a, a really good uh, number ten as a as a as a six, and then um, and Jack Moylan, the, the lad from Ireland, who's obviously who has obviously come in and, and, and scored four and two. Um, He's playing as a as a sort of war advanced ten, but then you've got your two up front in in Joe Taylor, and uh, depending on injuries, it might not be Ben House. But we think Ben House is probably going to be out. It could be Fred, Freddie Draper. Oh, bear with me. <laughs> Sorry, I had a I, I was getting a call off Nappers. He's trying to FaceTime me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he's um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, with Freddie Draper who was on loan at Warsaw at the start of the season and, and scored. Uh, I think he scored ten in 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 League Two for for them. So. Yeah, it, it's a real aggressive, front-heavy um, style of football, a, a really aggressive in the press, like we have been, even I think we were under Mark Kennedy. Um, and when yeah. we win the ball back, it's it's that transition. It's when we nick the ball off your central midfielders, it, it literally turns into a, a clean strike on goal. And you, you saw that on on uh, against Barnsley, how many times we intercepted the ball really high up the pitch and, and then at Cambridge on Tuesday. So 
it's a, it is a really good style of football, and you can only imagine that that at, with a full pre season and, and Scabala signing some of his is it players that he wants to bring in. Um, you know, if we don't go up this year, it, it could well be a monster for next year. Just waiting to waiting to brew. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Neil, what's what's your thoughts on on Lincoln? You must be, yeah, pretty sort of going like, well, fair play to them. You know, they've they've sort of done well, and that's the thing. It works at different stages. I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, obviously with Rovers, it's sort of similar. How you know, sort of both come in around the same time. Um, with not their players, you know, their own players, but obviously it's gone differently. I think us injuries has been a, a massive part. Um, obviously, you've had injuries as well, but he's he's just seemed to clicked really well for for Lincoln. But yeah, Neil, what's your thoughts? And obviously, let us know in the comments if you've got any other questions for Jake as well. Um, they timed it perfect, didn't they? They have timed it absolutely perfect. As far as what I talked about at the start of the season is when whether you're, you know, a fan or a player, what the outline is for pretty much every club which is on the brink of something is always be in the hunt with 10 left. Just get yourself in the hunt with yeah. 10 left and then hit your stride. And fair enough, the manager change has probably helped that matter, but they've timed it perfect, Lincoln. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. So you look at what they're doing now, what good is doing that in Feb? It's not, is it? What good is doing that in November? It's not. What they've done is they've got it just right. They've got the formula just right at the right time. And if you'd have looked at League One in and around sort of late November, early December, that league was split and there would have been a like a mini league with probably about six or seven sides with all of us in it. And one of us had to break out and do what they've done. And Lincoln has been the side that's done it. And now... Like I said, they timed just right to be bang in the hunt. What are they? What are they? Four points off, maybe a, Three, a playoff yeah. spot. Three points with yeah. what? Nine, ten left. They're they're banging it with sides like Oxford fall into pieces. You know. Um, yeah. And if they sneak in there, it's going to be one of them. A bit like when um, Rovers yeah, did that's it under two in it with under yeah, when Rovers did it under trolls like and, and Trollop, yeah, thirteenth, thirteenth, twelfth. Got Ricky Lambert going. Got herself firing. Once you stream in there, no one wants to play you. Hmm. And that that could be yeah. Lincoln, you know. But I think I'll go along with what Jake says, to be honest, is that that could be a, an even bigger monster next season if they get that right going into the summer. Tweak it a little bit and just try and keep that momentum going with the same formula. You could be looking at saying, Do you know what, I'm looking at Lincoln to be one of them sort of Pompey, Derby Bolton size where you just think there's someone's going to stay there. They they'll just stay there for the course. That could be yeah. them next season if if they don't do the hangover thing. But I don't think the hangover thing will come with Lincoln because they were never expected to do it anyway. What they've done is they've timed it bang on. Um, mm -hmm. And we could look, look at what they've done in the last five. What is it? Tell me if I'm wrong, Jake. But it looks like they've what bag twelve conceded one. Something frightening mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably a bit more. We could, scored 11 on too. we could be on a right yeah. ideas. Like, because at the end of the day. All the cards, all the cards are stacked for Lincoln. What are we playing for? We're sort of just yeah, jostling along, nothing. aren't we now? Lincoln are rubbing yeah. their hands together, going, we're just ticking these games off. Lincoln would play every other day if they could at the minute. They would, them lads would go out and play. None of them lads are feeling sore, feeling tired. They just, they'll just go again. Like our injury yeah. table is full of lads are going, do you know what? I just don't fancy it. I just don't feel right. They're looking at the fixture list. Can we just get to May? Lincoln aren't doing mm -hmm. that. All them lads are firing. Yeah, 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 completely. Yeah, like you said, there's their five. Look, look at that. Four clean sheets in the last five. I've already eight in the last twelve. Um, yeah, team full of yeah, um, quality. You know the you know Scabala's come in. Yeah, absolutely on fire. And like you said, thirteen points out of fifteen. We've got seven points out of fifteen. You just you can see there. You know how uh, inconsistent. You know the results. You know with just being mid table. Um, but like you said, we we have done well in in the in the away games. The last five, you know, uh, won three, drew one, and lost one. Um, kept back to back clean sheets. Um, but yeah, you know, it's gonna gonna be a really tough test. And to be fair, we, at Lincoln before last season, in the loss we had, I think it was was it one nil, and I think yeah. I can't remember one of our players got sent off, and then obviously Joey did that mad interview, didn't he? Uh, yeah, calling Aaron out on the radio. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, called him out on the radio. But yeah, before that, our our record's been good. I remember going there in the 
back when we we're in, in the, both in the conference and you know um you know in, in the past and obviously Neil talked about you know what we've done in the past obviously uh, uh, Neil brought up that season where obviously we beat you in 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 the playoff semi final um mm. you know that that run under Trollope yeah we that was the sort of the same and and Neil said it at, um at the start of the season and he's spot on uh, you see a lot of these teams I think even you know whether they've got a big budget or small budget or what like like Stephen is just sort of falling a little bit Oxford I I said at the start of the season they wouldn't get it um maybe things could have changed but Wardy's Wardy's obviously gutted now and especially after that mm. thumping um the other night and obviously there yeah their sort of results under Buckingham but yeah like you said you, you you've timed it perfectly and that's that's what you want to do that's what we did I even done it under under Joey as well in the league I know it's different league too but we'd done it then as well I think we only lost like three games from January to the end of the season and like you you haven't lost a game so that's a, a, a tiny little bit of hope that I'm keeping is that the fact surely at some point your unbeaten run has got to end or you've got to just draw because mm. it's either these last 12 games you've won seven and drew five but yep. the thing is with the amount of confidence you know your players have got you you know you're going to be yeah, you're going to be so confident and, and on it. And like you said, that that sort of pressing, sort of high, high, high intensity style. That's what I mean. Like different people have, like with me, I wouldn't, I like three at the back. Obviously, some people don't. Some people look at three at the back and go, wow. But, you know, for me, I th- if, like you said, if you can get it right and you can get a style and you can work on it, it works. Because a lot of teams in this league, do play three at the back. Um, there ain't many teams that don't play three at the back. But yeah, there's us as inconsistent as you get. One fourteen, drew eight, lost fifteen. Only off second draw since Taylor took over. Obviously, the first draw being on his opening game against Cheltenham at home when they started doing well. And Lincoln eight points above us. We've got a game in hand, but obviously you've got all the momentum. Lost ten, but like you said, haven't lost in twelve games. And I saw. I mean, even a. Even a few weeks ago, I think we, we were above you, but yeah, just your record and like you said, it's sort of different. I said to Neil before we come on, this is what I w- wanted Rovers to do, what you were doing right now. I, I said mm. at the start of the season, I was confident, but I think injuries have been and I think obviously manager turnaround and how long it took and you know loads of players being out of contract with us. I, I think we'll see, hopefully see more of obviously Taylor and, and what we can do next season. I think you are we, going in the right direction though, Charlie, because obviously you've, you've yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've seen yeah. it through Twitter, through the new, you guys have started uh, having a new recruitment system in the summer. You're, you know, yeah. That that model is way more effective. You know, if you can become like a Brentford more than trying to buy the best players in the league, i.e. like you went after Clark Harris all summer, if you can recruit intelligently, you can then earn yourself, you know, more money and then you can buy better players and you work up the league. It, it's something that we've done in terms of the director of football um, model. And I think if Rovers get it right, they're a club probably with a little bit more money than Lincoln and probably a bigger backing than Lincoln as well. Um, if you get, you know, if a, if, a, if a big club like Rovers get going with a and they run correctly off the pitch for recruitment, then I think you can absolutely do, do something like, like what we're doing. And we're just reaping the rewards and, and hopefully you can in a, a couple of years as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like us. Yeah, because I think, well, I think even at the start of the season, it's, I think it's been a, annoying for a lot of um, fans that, you know, we had a lot of talk from even well, well in the summer or, or he's, I think he's, he's not really, he's still our sort of part of our ownership, but he's not as much, you know, in, in the summer they were going, all mad saying our oh, promotion on uh, over on Instagram. And I think a lot of us were confident of, you know, yes, you know, it looks now and you think, oh, even Rovers fans are saying, oh, this squad ain't as good as it is. But I think everything is there. Like you said, we had the Clark Harris thing, you know, we've, um, yeah, sort of been in a lot of games, but like you said, it's about getting it right. And obviously, a lot of the stuff off field is sounding good, but hopefully it, it, it gets done, like you said, with the new recruitment and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see. Hopefully, um, yeah, we can we can yeah pop a smash it next season, or at least um being with a real chance of of playoffs. Um, yeah, 
Ben said it's either going to be 4 0 Lincoln or Rovers win 1 0. No <laughs> chance that we draw. I yeah, think we're going to score think... seven now. It goes five, six, seven, doesn't it? <laughs> Bloody hell. Imagine that, Mike. That works. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope not. But yeah, we're. <laughs> I mean, one one more question before we go into lineups and predictions, like we always do. Mm -hmm. What weaknesses um, can Rovers try and get at you? If there's one weakness, I think obviously every team does. But what yeah. what could you say if there was one area that we could have a chance of of getting something? Where do you think that would be? Um, I think set pieces, corners. Uh, they were a real real bugbear of ours at the start of the season. I, I seem to remember. The equaliser that, that you scored against us came from a corner. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just in the 90-whatever bloody minute, the, the referee decided to play on to. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm very bitter. Um, but but set pieces, are, uh, especially, I mean, the the, 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 absolute, the pinnacle of that is four minutes into the season, we're, we're away at Bolton, concede a set piece. And I think a lot of games after that, we went on a run of conceding from corners. So if you can get, you know, your, your, your creative players... Um, Taking some good corners out. I know you've got some pretty decent set set piece players in the likes of Harvey Vale. You know, Giovanni Brown's pretty. To be fair, last time Giovanni Brown came to Lincoln, he was fantastic for Exeter. Um, if you can get them sort of players having some put some really good balls in and attacking it with your your big defenders, then like likes of Connor Taylor, if he's going to be fit, um, that that could be a way of getting something. Otherwise, I can imagine Rovers going to come and sit back. Um, they're gonna. You're probably gonna tell us, right? You know, you're the, the form team. Come and break us down. Um, and if you can hit clinically on the counter, you, you, you've clearly got a chance. But the issue with Cambridge was they couldn't get out. The issue with Barnsley was they couldn't get out. So whether you've got that quality to, to be able to 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 spring sustained counter attacks. So yeah, I, I think set pieces are gonna be your way um, because we we don't concede a lot of goals. So if you get one chance, you're gonna have to take it. Um, and to be fair, you've got you've got a man that that, that knows how to do just that in, in Chris Martin. So, um, yeah. going to be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you should say that because um, the last last two games, Martin hadn't even had a shot on on target. Oh, fantastic! Um, he had, <laughs> yeah, he had he had one he had one. Sh if any of the chances that we had fell to Martin the other night, we win that probably two nil. But. A lot of the chances didn't fall to him. I think he had a shot blocked in the in the first half, and then yeah. against Derby, I don't think he had a shot. They kept him, you know, Nelson, Nelson Bradley, and um, you know, Cashin are just mad at this level, and we just couldn't mm -hmm. really. We had the one chance from your old your old mate Marquis, who should have scored. He's mm -hmm. had three or four times this season where he's he's missed sitters, and he, he should be scoring. Yeah. But funny that you should also say that. You can see a lot from set pieces because we don't score a lot from set pieces. So, oh, fantastic. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully this is the time where we do score from a set piece. We did um, against us last time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, is it Ward I, is it Graham Ward? No, it was Josh Grant. Uh, Josh, Josh Grant. Grant that yeah, was it. Yeah, Josh Grant. So, um, yeah, it would be nice if we can score from a set piece. But it's and it's also funny that you say about Giovanni Brown because, as you know, it hasn't really. Uh, worked out for him in the, the way we would all like to when we signed him in the summer. Um, yeah. Obviously, forget off the pitch issues. He's on the pitch at Exeter. He was unreal. Last couple of years, we signed him. Started you know, pre-season. He was he was like prime Messi. He scored a worldie against Braga. He was on fire. Started the season quite well as well um, at Pompey. Got injured and then didn't really hasn't really found his feet, and then a, a few weeks ago he had a good run in the team, but Derby he was benched. Um, come on with twenty minutes to go, and then against Fleetwood he didn't even come on, didn't even start. Mm. So it would be nice to see him back in. We'll get into lineups, but he would be in my team. Um, and yeah, Ben saying the same. Would like to see Giovanni play. Weird that he's not even come on the yeah, last two games. So it is a bit of a strange one, and it's interesting going into the game. But Neil, what? Um, lineup would you be playing would you try and change it and maybe go three at the back or would you keep playing four at the back like we have done the last couple of games nah i'd keep it i'd keep it as it was to be honest um i don't think it does you any good at this stage of the season where we are and what we are sort of everything's everything's looking towards the summer everything's geared towards the summer and i think regardless of what 
Taylor's got plans for the summer and what his strategy is as far as how we set up is a is is modeling his side. I think off the back of drawing nil nil on the road on Tuesday, go into a side like Lincoln doesn't help your dressing room if you chop and change that around is about for I think it shows fear. To be honest, I'd keep it and just say, Do you know what? you've earned yourself a point in the clean sheet. Let's go again. Go again. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they'll do it, but I just think it shows confidence in what you've got against a real form side where there's going to be a lot of traffic coming that in that direction. Um yeah. I'd probably I'd take Finley and Sinclair out. I'd just take them senior boys out from Tuesday night. Um and I'd put I'd put Giovanni in and I'd put Grant Ward back in. I just think Contra and Ward's going to be needed for legs in there because they're going to have to do a job of trying to maintain that screen of in front of that back four as well as helping the fullbacks. They're going to have to fan out as well um, yeah. in their own half. Evans in front of that. Like I said, Brown and Vale, the other side of Chris Martin through the middle. But like I said, Lincoln can it hurt you from multiple areas. We've just got to be really compact and organised through the centre of that pitch because if you let them go through the guts of you, you're bang in trouble. Yeah, yeah, Jake alluded to it. That's what they try and do, high press and then, you know, spaces in behind. And, yeah, it's an, in, it's an interesting one, really. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm, I mean, Jake, we'll get what... I'm guessing you would you would go unchanged, but, yeah, tell us your starting eleven for... Um, so, we have actually had a few injuries. So, Ben House is not meant to not, meant to not be playing on, on Saturday. He... Went off with a knock on Tuesday night. Um, Alex Mitchell, who's been a real big part of the, at the bat for us, he also went off. Um, he's more likely to play, but again, we don't know. Um, so what I think Scavala will go for will, will be Jensen in goal. Obviously, like you said, 16 clean sheets. He's banging a race for, for, for Golden Glove and fingers crossed he gets it. It'll be a bat three, definitely, of Sean Rowan. Um, really talented Irish um, under 21 international, who's um, it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Sean. Um, <laughs> also, we'll have uh, Paddy O'Connor, who's a bit of a, a, a bat in centre half. And then it's really interesting because if um, if Mitchell's injured and Mitchell can't play, you've then got Adam Jackson, who scored the goal at, at, at the Men, yeah. who's had a fantastic season. I seem to remember when we played away at your place last season, he was just blocking all the Aaron Collins and and and, and Marquis efforts. Oh, I'm getting a ring from Tom now. Goodness me, the T Lock boys are really after. I'll, I'll tell you what, the t- I wasn't expecting the T Lock boys to be after me this evening, but here they are. Um, but yeah, so I, I'd expect, um, I'd, I'd expect maybe uh, Aoma or, or Jackson to come in there. Like I say, wing backs will be um, Lass Sorensen on the right. Rico Hackett will almost certainly play down the left. With a midfield three, I don't think you can change it. Arahan, um, Mandroyu, and, and, and Jack Moylan, you know, you can't change a winning formula. Then you'll have. Joey Taylor up front. I think you'd be you'd be daft not to to play with Joe Taylor. Um, and then it's really a debate as to, to who starts up there with him. Um, uh, that could be uh, Freddie Draper, like I mentioned, um, but it could also be um, Joe Von Makama, who uh, who actually came off the bench and, and played really well on on Tuesday. So um, he's got options, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sh- strong team, like you said, going in for the last few games. Yeah, you're just on, on football. Last 12 games, really, but especially the last two, scoring mm-hmm. 11. I think, yeah, again, yeah, for us, it's going to be sort of, yeah, starting well, like we have done the last couple of games. Um, I know Derby had a lot of the ball against us, but we started fairly well, solid. Um, and the same at, same at Fleetwood. I know it's completely different. Um sort of kettle of fish but yes we need it we need another strong start if we're going to get anything and not not concede early um like obviously you did to to cambridge you know they conceded really early and it was just floodgates open so yeah um yeah we'll agree with nil uh young defense need yeah to be fair there ain't really much to do anyway i think wilson is still james wilson's still suspended after he got a violent conduct at lincoln um Obviously, Jack Hunt injured again, calf injury. I think Baggett is improving. Um, Connor Taylor has just come back from injury. His first start in, what, two months against Derby. Um, so, yeah, Yusuf, yeah, Yusuf going with a couple of changes, pretty much similar as well. And I think Will is also going with um, 
yeah, two changes as well. Pretty much the same team, I think. Um, yeah, for me, I'd go... Um, it's hard because I think if we had Luke Thomas fit, he's he's out injured as well, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I think if we had him fit, we we could possibly go to a back five because we uh, we had um, uh, Jake Barker from Rams talk on. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. we were telling him when we were on our good run over the Christmas period where we beat um, Bolton Pompey, we were playing a five back with Luke Thomas as a wing back. And he, mm-hmm. I we remember seeing it come out of Bolt and thinking, why why is Taylor putting like this five foot six, five foot seven winger uh, wing back? And he was quality. So if he was fit, I would play a back three with uh, with Thomas's wing back. But because he isn't and Hunt's injured, then yeah, I agree. Keep the back four of uh, Hall, Taylor, Baggett, and Gordon with the, with the oldest player being Lewis Gordon at twenty three. And then I would go with I would go with Conte. And Conte and Evans in a midfield two. I would go with uh, Vell on the right, Sinclair on the left, and then Giovanni sort of playing as a false nine with Chris Martin. I think I would I would maybe go to a three or maybe sort of yeah in the free mid, but I just think you need a a little bit of pace on the break if you're going to be pressing high. For us, I think counter attack we're going to be need to be really good. And I think with Sinclair still got the pace, um, and Harvey Vell uh, uh, as well. So that would be my that would be mine. Basically, like a four four two four four one one. But yeah, getting on to score predictions now. Leave your score predictions in the comments below. Of course, if you're watching on the replay, then leave them in the comments. Um, keep hitting the like button as well. Like I said, Fan Hub, join that. The code is under my name or in the description and at the bottom of the screen screen as well. But yeah, starting off with you, Neil. What's your score prediction and goal scorers? Um, being as reserved as I can, um, I think we get beat sort of three-one. That's me being as reserved. I can see us getting pumped, to be honest. If things go the way Lincoln want them to go, and they start fast, you know, score within the first ten minutes, tails are up, and they just, you know, smell blood. Um, but yeah, three. I'll say three one. Um, I don't know, sort of. Joe Taylor, O'Connor, Aki Taylor, and then if we score, like I said three one. If we score, it's Chris Martin in it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's always pretty much Chris Martin. Yeah, fifteen goals. Hasn't scored for two games, but hopefully he's, he's saving it for 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 Lincoln away. Um, yeah, already had one there. Jim Wall seven nil. Lincoln. Um, ben Darrell's also gone 4-1 Lincoln. Uh, so one more to add. <laughs> Bloody hell. Another, God, these predictions. It's better not be like this, I swear. I do not want to be... You're not at the end of it, here. Charlie, mate. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Do you, Trust, do you remember, when, do you remember you? when you told me, Charlie? Do you remember when you, Joe and Ben all told me that Bristol Rovers were had a better squad than Lincoln? Do you remember? I, I still think we do have happy. a better squad. I, I still think we do have a better squad. Personally, but yeah, we'll we'll see in it if it's um. That's why you'll never sit in a dugout, mate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Spot on, Neil. Spot on. Yeah. I'd... Yeah. To be fair, I I still do. I think a fully fit Rovers squad against a fully fit Lincoln squad. I think our squad is better, but obviously the table table doesn't lie. Right, yeah. Um. But Very yeah, true. but yeah, loads of predictions going in. Um. Yeah, Jake, what's your School prediction. Are you going for seven nil, six one, five one, no. like we've seen in the comments? No, 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 no. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm way too di- not. I'm way too respectful. I think you guys are a good side. You know, you've got some really good players in there. Like Camille Conte, obviously played up the A46 at Grimsby, so he might get a bit of stick yeah. uh, on yeah, on Saturday. You, but you've got some good players. Um, Conte is a, a really good player. Um, Jed Wall and Goal has been fantastic since coming into the first team. Connor Taylor is. A player that you signed for, for a six-figure sum. Then you're going forward, Chris Martin in the hunt for a golden boot. Scott Sinclair, whilst he's he, he's a veteran, he's, he's he's a really experienced and and good wide player at the level. I am happy that you that, that Jack Hunt and, and Luke Thomas are likely to be out as well as Aguilera because they would have all been been threats. I seem to remember that Thomas and and Hunt down your right hand side causes all sorts of issues in the first yeah. half at at the Mem. Um, so I'm glad that they're both out, but 
I, I don't I don't subscribe to the idea that we're that, that we're gonna continue to score loads and loads of goals. You look at our, our, the the um the XG for the, the two games that we've scored five and six, it's it's only been about three. So um it just shows you how clinical we are. So I, I'm gonna go Lincoln to Bristol Rovers nil. Um I, I think it will be a fairly routine win. Um obviously we're we we could be in the playoffs on, on Saturday if results go our way. Yeah. Um you, uh, you boys are on the beach. I think you, you are absolutely fine and, and, and preparing for next season, which I think will be will be good under Matty Taylor. But I, I, I think you know, especially if you come with a young defence, that yes, you kept a clean sheet away at Fleetwood, um, but who doesn't, Nappers but, and um, and Orient, Orient as well, and and, and Orient. I mean, we. we we also did. We also we've also done both of those. But don't don't, yeah. don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think two nil. Um, I, I think goal scorers. I think Joe Taylor gets two. He's got five goals, two assists in his last in the last calendar month. He's a, a centre forward running running really hot now. And I think I think I've seen a, a stat. He's the the only player under the age of twenty three that's got more goal contributions. It's Haaland. Joe Taylor is, is Erling Haaland. Yeah, and yeah, I see he's that been, playmaker he's stats. Been, yeah. He's he's in some pretty pretty good company there. So yeah, Joe Taylor double two of Lincoln, I think. Yeah, he's yeah he's he's on he's on unreal. Like I said earlier, I wanted to get him. Do you reckon? Do you reckon you've got a good chance of of getting him? Because he's mm. he's a Luton, isn't he? Yeah, Luton, yeah. He ain't, look, he ain't gonna pay prem. Yeah. Well, if he comes off um, scoring between ten and and twelve goals and getting Lincoln promoted to the championship, he's absolutely going to play in Luton's first team. Um, yeah, yeah, but there's well, a yeah, there's a yeah. there's a reason that they trusted him to take a penalty in the playoff final to get to the Premier League. Yeah, like they yeah. really rate him very highly. So I, I can see a world where Joe Taylor goes back to Luton and, and, and plays, or if not, it's very similar to um, Stansfield at Fulham. Yeah, yeah, you know, goes up yeah. and plays in the Championship, and uh, and Jay Stansfield's done some amazing things for for, for Birmingham City this year. So um, yeah, I, I don't think we keep Joe Taylor. I, I would love us to keep Joe Taylor, but. We ain't got that sort of money. Strikers cost money, and uh, the, yeah. The, yeah, our record signing is about two, about two hundred grand. So we're not going to blow the coffers out for him, unfortunately. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. We'll have to see, but yeah, hopefully he doesn't go on a mad one. But yeah, on good form. Yeah, for me, um, I mean, I did say earlier the, the unbeaten run needs to stop, but I can't, I can't. If for me being so optimistic and confident usually um yeah i can't i can't see it really um rovers you know you've probably seen we can pull off some good results against the better teams and our wins usually mm -hmm. do come against the better teams um but yeah i just think yeah i think you'll have too much too much confidence you're going for playoffs which i think you will get um Ooh. i was about to ask yeah, you that actually do you think we were going to get them yeah i do personally neil do you reckon lincoln will get it Playoffs? Um, Difficult. I can't. I can't make a case for them not to. To be honest, look at the way they're chugging on. Like yeah. if you're talking about form, and that's what I'm talking about as far as striking it right at the right time. I can't make a case for them not getting in there. To be honest, especially with yeah. you know Oxford. They've Oxford been on the wobble for months, and they still stick around in yeah. there somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I can't make a case for them not to get in there. To be honest. Yeah. yeah, Stephen is getting nine points from twenty-seven as well, and just to enjoy the the Steve Evans tears on Sky Sports last night was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean it's, it's funny. A few weeks ago, on that, I'm sure you've seen it when you've done the teal up as well. When we had that mad game against them, when we were two 0 down, looked like it was going to be yeah. five 0 Stevenage, and yeah, yeah. Taylor makes a change because that was that was when he that was when he made the change of going four at the back from that game when we were two 0 down in like 20 minutes and he made the change and then we won three, two, but yeah, it was nice to see uh, Evan's tears. Um, and obviously Matt, um, Matt, the Stevenage fan is obviously. Oh God. Yeah. He's, he's, he's still thinks it's going to be gonna nice seeing him not as positive. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my prediction though, um, I'll go two one Lincoln. Um, yeah, I'll go two one Lincoln. I, I, like I said, I just think you'll have, I just think you'll have too much. It would be nice for us to get, even a point would be brilliant. Um, but yeah, I just think you'll have too much. I'll go, I'll, I'll actually go Baggett. I'll go Baggett from a set piece to get his first goal before he goes off to international break. And I'll go, I'll go 
Paulie O'Connor as well, because we like conceding set pieces. And I'll go Joe Taylor. I think he's just been on quality, quality form. But yeah, let's get into to the other predictions we haven't uh, read out. Wayne Clark also says 7-0. Well, heads there's 7-0. Hart says 3-1. Um, Positive. Martin to score says uh, will be actually vlogs. Um, two on Lincoln as well. Um, we'll put a fight, but we'll tend to play well. But there's no optimism. I, I don't. I, um, I just. I, I find it really difficult. Just to, and I, I understand you guys got some really good attacking players. Um, but ironically, since getting rid of our best defender last year in Regan Paul, we've got better at the back. Yeah, um, yeah. And we've yeah. we've conceded some clean sheets against some really good sides this year. Derby didn't trouble us and you know we saw them kind of blow you away and in, in, in certainly in the second half at your place yeah. a couple of weeks ago I, I I'm not I'm not trying to sound I, I I think you'll get one chance and it's whether you take it or it, or not and it completely but uh, Jensen's been a, a, a good a really good keeper this year I, I'd back him to save it nine times out of ten yeah yeah he has done well to be fair since um signing from was it Burnley he signed from because he was yeah he signed from Burnley but it was with Aki last year Obviously, his dad, the old uh, Burnley yep. keeper, as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it will be tough. Like you said, we haven't we haven't really been Martin's clinical. I think if he gets a chance, he'll score. Mm -hmm. I think if if he gets a chance, he'll score because he hasn't been getting many chances for us, and he still somehow scored fifteen goals from yeah, not um, yeah, a lot. But yeah, Alicia says four one Lincoln. Uh, Yusuf says three 0 Lincoln. Chris Collier going 6-1. Um, don't want another I'm repeat of Lackerton away in the COVID season. No thanks. 4-1 um, uh, Lincoln. And yeah, obviously Joe 7-0 as well. So yeah, not many people predicting us to get anything. All the pressure is on Lincoln, of course. And yeah, I'm not really looking forward to to, to that <laughs> hacket against Luca Hall. Because, um, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. be if I were you either. I do, I, do, I do like Luca, but he's he's so he's so slow off the mark, and Hackett is just he's obviously had injury issues as well, and you know mm. he he um has obviously found found the home really. A, a lot of Pompey fans I've seen you and Tom talk about it loads of times, you know Hackett, and but yeah, he's been on fire um recently, um yeah, and Ben Darrell saying the same. But yeah, we're pretty much going to end it now. Um, yeah, been another really good episode. Thanks to everyone that tuned in live. Of course, if you watched it on the replay, then do leave a like, subscribe, share around, follow the Talking Gas podcast socials on Instagram and Twitter. Um, like I said, Fan Hub, get involved. You can win tickets to play at the Mem, tickets for other games, Rovers games as well. Um, thanks to Jake for coming on as well, obviously, for the second time this season. Um, always appreciate it. Like I said, check out. Uh, that League One pod and also uh, Nappers on his League One lives. You can find Jake as well most weeks, um, and unless Lincoln have maybe lost, like they, yeah, they if you beat us, I'm not going to be on there on the weekend, unfortunately. <laughs> I think I might be uh, busy. It, that would that would be nice, but I doubt it. But who knows? Uh, and also, obviously, thanks to Neil as always uh, for coming on. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe, um, leave your comments in the chat if you haven't already. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you for a match reaction where Rovers surprise everyone and get a good result. But yeah, thanks for watching and up the gas.